This is Brian Jackson from Devotion Gallery, and you're watching Wink Sound. Tonight, we're doing another Ableton user group. This workshop is around using multiple launch pads with multiple computers running Ableton Live and open our space up to the community so people can see what we're up to. My name is Adriano Clemente. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. I'm from Italy, and I work here at Devotion Gallery. Novation's Launchpad is a control surface built to take advantage of Ableton Live's unique session view interface. Ableton Live has room for six control surfaces. There are two computers running Ableton Live at the same time, five launchpads on the 17 inches and five launchpads on the other one. They are following the same and sharing the same BPM. They are connected via Wi-Fi. So for such a simple device, it's a square with 64 buttons. It's kind of an open palette, and you can use it for pretty much whatever you need to use it for. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up and use multiple control surfaces in Ableton Live. A control surface is a MIDI controller that is pre-configured to use with Live. You do not have to program it. You just learn how to use it. We have to start out by going into the Preferences, on the Mac from the Live menu, and on a PC from the Options menu. Here in the MIDI Sync tab, we can see six choosers for up to six control surfaces. As you can see here, there's an extensive list of supported devices. If you don't see one of your devices in here, there's a good chance that there is a script floating around somewhere on the internet. Probably notice that I have four control surfaces configured, two Novation launch pads, a Novation Remote SL0, and an M-Audio Oxygen 8. Before going further with the control surfaces, let's just talk a little bit about these parameters down here. The MIDI port section is related to standard MIDI use. Track means that you want the device to show up as an option in a MIDI tracks from chooser or to chooser. Remote is for Live's MIDI mapping features, which is separate from control surface functionality. There are a few different uses for these controllers. Of course, for launching clips and scenes, but also for controlling the mixer, device parameters, and transport functions too. Each launch pad is going to give me an 8x8 grid. And since I have two of them, I might want them to control different tracks in session view, or I might leave them overlapping. I could use one for launching clips and the other for mixer control. There are a lot of different options. There's a lot of different ways you can choose to go with this. If I want to move these around, I just hit the left, right, or up or down buttons on the top of the launch pad until I see the colored ring move to the desired location. If I had six launch pads connected, I would see six different colors for the rings. In addition to the clip launching, this also helps us see which mixer channels are going to be controlled. With the remote SL and the Oxygen 8, we have to set them to the proper presets. Now, they'll both control the transport and also whichever device that you see a blue hand on. Though I can just click on whichever one I want to move the blue hand, what if I always want to control one of them when I'm not looking at it? Or what if I want the remote SL to stay with the blue hand as it moves and the oxygen always to control the auto filter on the master? So no problem. You just right click and in the context menu, you can lock the device to the control surface. Okay, so let's look at how to override default mappings. What if I always want one of the launch pads buttons to always launch a certain clip, no matter where the ring is? Or what if I want one of the oxygen's knobs to always control a certain send? Now, first we need to double check that remote is enabled in the MIDI sync tab. Because remember, the remote column is just related to the MIDI mapping button here in the upper right. So I click on the MIDI map mode switch, and if need be, I'll also open the mapping browser if I want to see what's going on. Okay, first I'm going to click on a clip and then press a button. Now that's mapped. Now I want to make sure I see my sends. I'll click on one of them and then turn a knob. That's it. Just keep in mind that these controls are now ignored for any other use, as they are now dedicated mappings. Here's a little tip if you're using the launch pad. If you want to use user 1 or user 2 mode, which offer additional 64 buttons, make sure that you switch to those modes before entering MIDI mapping, or when you press user 2, Live will think you're trying to map that button. While control surfaces may offer different feature sets, they all work on the same principles. Like usual, Live makes all of the setup quick and easy. Just make sure your preferences are set up correctly and that you choose the right preset in your MIDI controller. To find out more about me and the classes that I do at Devotion Gallery, go to learn.areyoudevoted.com. Join the conversation by following Wink Sound on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to keep up with everything you need to know about music and audio technology.